And I'm on FaceTime with my wife right here, holding the phone. Walk into the kitchen. Boom! <laughs> phone falls right there. Yeah. My uncle catches me as I fall to the kitchen floor. And then I'm sitting there, full on, full uh, storm, storm episode. So I had nine cardiac arrests within five minutes. Welcome everyone to yet another episode here on the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. As you may know by now, here on the podcast, I chat with fellow cardiac arrest survivors in the hopes to support other survivors on this uh, very life-altering journey that is just bumpy and messy and has many ups and downs uh, for many cardiac arrest survivors. Most survivors that I talk to uh, on this podcast would say that's uh, a bit what they go through. Uh, I myself would say that as well, that it's a very bumpy ride. Uh, dealing with all this and just like our guest in this episode would say which is kevin marcus miller a uh, cardiac arrest survivor who survived a cardiac arrest at the age of 25. now he actually survived his first cardiac arrest at the age of 25 uh, because that was not his last one in fact over the years he has survived a total of 12 cardiac arrests which is just crazy you know to hear um and it's very crazy to hear kevin talk about in the episode now if you're curious after this conversation to check out uh kevin and you know the work that he does because he is also the host of a podcast called setbacks to comebacks podcast where he interviews other people who also uh, have an incredible uh, comeback story, just like him. You can find in the description of this episode uh, the show notes, and there you can find uh, websites, you know, the website to connect with Kevin, uh, and anything else, you know, any other resources that were mentioned in this episode there. With that, I hope that you will enjoy this episode, uh, but most of all, that you will find support and find some insights here in this episode with heart warrior Kevin Marcus Miller. Kevin, a uh, warm welcome here to the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. It's it's so good to finally talk to you. Hey, nice to meet you, Ellis. Thanks for having me. I've had many people uh, where I asked, like, how did you survive your cardiac arrest? But uh, you had 12 cardiac arrests, mm -hmm. which is mind-blowing uh, to, to just hear. But I guess there has to be a first one, right? <laughs> so <laughs> when when was your first cardiac arrest? Like, what age were you? How long was it ago? Yeah, what was the... Yeah, the yeah man. Um, 25. I was 25. I'm 29 right now. So this was 2019. Um, I was playing basketball, coming up the court. Yep. Had a car, you know, similar to LeBron James' son. Right, so playing basketball, it was just a little rec league, and then um, was in an induced coma for three days, and um, mm. that was my very first cardiac arrest. No genetic anything; it was ventricular tachycardia. They used an AED machine, all that good stuff. So yeah, it was um, it was a lot. It was a lot. Very first one was a lot. It was heavy, and then. Um, Walked out of the hospital, had a defibrillator, right? Do you have one too? Yeah, I have, yeah, I have one too. S yep. Mm -hmm. SICD on the left. Ah, so, yeah. all right. So I got the normal one. Or, well, I don't know the normal one, but I got the one on Pace the maker. chest. Okay. Yeah, well, it's not a pace. It's also an ICD, but it's just they placed it oh, on it my is. chest. Do you know why they placed yours on the site? Yeah, so the technology for mine, they said, is um, much for younger folks and... Um, they didn't want to put leads in my in my heart area for whatever reason. Because that's usually for folks who are older is what they said. Not really? sure why. Okay. But yeah, yeah, yeah. They said this is for like athletes. They put the athletes ones on the side. They didn't tell you that? Uh, no. I mean, there might be other reasons, right? Maybe the, the heart condition that you have or something that might right. determine. I don't know. Yeah, are you V-fib? Uh, V-fib? I don't know. I, I have like a, a heart condition my whole life uh, that oh, okay. caused the cardiac arrest as well. But it's an electrical problem with my heart that that um, 
I mean, the heart condition that I have. Yeah. Um, yeah. So they yep. had to put leads into my heart, actually. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes perfect but, uh, sense. So yours is much longer than mine. That's why. But go on, please. Um, okay, so they placed the ICD. You walked out of the hospital. Yep. And then what? Yep, and then I'm walking out, uh, not not enjoying it, bitter, angry, yeah. um, not feeling it, feeling like people don't understand me, salty, and then... Um, I go back to my job. I was working as a temp at Microsoft. So I was a Microsoft marketer. Okay. And I go back to the job. Yeah. Everything's different, man. Everything's different. Like PTSD kicks in. I didn't know what it was at the time. Oh. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm walking around, scared, walking around, um, going into the bathroom when I was there. I thought I had another one, but it really was PTSD. So I'm just what not telling feel? anybody. What you experienced? Um, that first moment, like in the bathroom, I experienced like panic, uh-huh. like uh, yeah. terror. Like I was like, okay, oh wow, I'm about to have another cardiac arrest because you can't. The brain doesn't know the difference. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yep. So mm-hmm. I, I think I'm going into cardiac arrest, but I'm not right, and so. I don't tell anybody, man. I didn't tell anybody that I even had the cardiac arrest and I just go back. And then I was like, man, I don't think I can work anymore. I don't, this is not working out. So Mm. six months work that work the temp gig. And then, um, I leave and I say, okay, I'm going to try to make some money on the internet as an entrepreneur because this is just not working out. I don't like going into buildings. I don't like, yeah. Uh, how my body feels. I don't feel safe. I just want to be at home. So that was the uh, the genesis for me of, well, this is a new normal. Hmm. Yeah. Wait, and that was six months that you worked at your old job? Yeah. Yeah, before yeah. you made that decision? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Six months exactly. of experiencing this PTSD symptoms. Yeah. And you didn't tell anyone? No. 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 Any reasons why you mm. didn't share it? Yeah, because I didn't want to um, have them start looking at my work. I didn't want them to hyper-criticize or okay. let me go early, you know, because I needed the benefits to pay for my surgeries. Sure, sure. So sure, I wasn't, yeah. wasn't uh, trying to get, you know... I didn't want anything to jeopardize that. And then you're home after those six months. And then I move actually back in with my mom. Crazy enough. Mm -hmm. So I move back in with my mom, uh, my girlfriend as well. We move back in. We say, okay, let's, let's uh, see if we can start a business. (laughs) So I started a marketing agency. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. And, and turns out I didn't fail. (laughs) So, so that was, <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing that, that much. You know, I was kind of learning as I go and stuff and uh-huh. taking courses and using debt and credit cards and all that. And <laughs> right. <Yeah. laughs> still, brother, I still didn't know I had PTSD. I just didn't know. I just thought, it, I just didn't know. You know what I mean? I just wasn't sure what was happening. So I kept having more cardiac arrest. Right. So I had another one, uh, when I went to go play basketball again, cause my doctor said, okay, Hey, cool. Let, let's see if, have you go back to normal activity. <laughs> and, uh, wait, wait, the, what, fi- what was the time period here? Cause what, yeah. when did your cardiologist said that like, okay, you can go on basketball again. Yeah. 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 So that was, uh, so timeline is August, 2019 was the first one. Second one was, I think it was like September of the next year. Oh man. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm playing ball again, and then I go, but this time I have the defibrillator. Yeah. And this is my first time getting shocked, too. Mm. So I got shocked. Mm-hmm. Everybody's like, call 911. Right? We're all freaking out. I don't know what's happening. Damn. And um, that, that's when I realized, like, okay, I can't quite t- differentiate the difference between the PTSD and the cardiac arrest because they feel the same before they happen, both of them. Mm-hmm. 
the symptoms are the same for me. And so had that cardiac arrest. They uh, recalibrated the device. It also uh, inappropriately shocked me a couple times too. Have you ever had what? that happen? What? In, in the... Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I have heard of people having had that happen too as well, right? Inappropriate shocks. Yeah. But a few times you said for you. Two, yeah. One uh, in the shower. Just just randomly. Mm -hmm. you, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wait, and that was during that first year that he did that? Mm, yeah, 2020. So 2019 was the first cardiac arrest. 2020, yeah. I had like two accidental shocks and one, one needed one. One needed. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Holy shit, man. So you had a couple of... Uh, <laughs> You had a couple of shocks already in your life. Like, I've had a shock, my only one so far, which, I mean, I don't need more. I don't need more shocks. You know, no one <laughs> likes shocks. But I had it in my sleep. Uh, oh! So, Did you feel it? Yeah, it was super weird. I woke up in complete panic, and mm. I thought mm. I just had a nightmare. I, I, I thought that was it. And then... Well, and then the hospital called me. I was like, hey, uh, <laughs> you got to come in and uh, get your ICD checked. Uh, so, yeah. Okay. Uh, so, but I wasn't completely fully conscious about, about it. So I also think that I didn't fully experience, in a way, the pain that you feel when you are right, awake. Right. How were all the shocks? How, how was it? How was it to, I mean, the pain? How did you feel? How, how how was it for you to have these shocks? Man, you know what's worse than the shock? The anticipation of the shock. Oh, man, yeah. <laughs> right? Because once yeah. you have it for real and you know the pain yeah, level, yeah. you know what the trigger is, right? So if you have a PTSD onset and you think that the trigger's coming, you're anticipating mm -hmm. the shock, right? You're anticipating the shock. That's worse than the actual shock. <laughs> I can imagine in a way... I mean, in the beginning, yeah. for myself, yeah. I had a lot more trouble to going going to bed. Yep. Because I was like, "Fuck, am I gonna get shocked again?" <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it's, I'm glad we can laugh uh, about it now, man. I mean, how could? Yeah, you, yeah. I mean, this shit, this shit sucks. But at the end of the day, man, like this is our life. You know what I'm saying? It's our life. What what else are we gonna do? Fucking sit around. It's and, too wild. It's too wild. It's too wild in a way to not laugh about it. <laughs> yeah. Technology, something else, ain't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, man, I, you know, worked a bit, you know, grew the business a little bit, you know, at the time, uh, 20 next year, 2021, um, uh -huh. was making websites for people. Yep. Making, um, you know, marketing plans, all that kind of stuff. Had some issues in business, right? Some pivots, some setbacks. And that's when I kind of came up with this concept of, um, building a personal brand, right? So that's why I started doing podcasts and was like, oh, well, I can tell my story from setback to comeback and kind of coin that. So that was that was the concept, man. And I was like, well, as long as I package it pretty, <laughs> package it pretty, I can always um, not only help someone else, but find work, uh, feel fulfilled, yeah. make this new life meaningful, right? Make yeah, this yeah. new life feel yeah. good to me. So that's just like you, man, like talking to other survivors. I talk to um, cancer survivors, uh, human mm. trafficking survivors, and we tell comeback stories. So that's kind of what I'm doing now in my cool. life is telling comeback stories. Very cool. Very cool. I actually checked um, the podcast uh, a few days ago. Oh, cool. And uh, for people listening, I will also put the podcast in the show notes uh, to find Thanks, it because I think it's really cool what you're doing with it. Very cool. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it, man. Yeah, I um, I think it's great that you're reaching out to other survivors because a lot of times, man, we're talking about other things or trying to motivate someone. But when we're talking to another survivor, that's it's less performative. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You can relate with with, with certain yeah. things, right? <laughs> with the whole ECD, yeah. ICD <laughs> thing, for example, or <laughs> other other. How's stuff it been with your family, with? man? You got family that's been on this journey with you too. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, my yeah. girlfriend, for example. I mean, she was right. the one who actually saved my life when I had really? my cardiac arrest. So, 
Yeah, and it was just at the beginning when we were just starting to date. Oh, wow. And it was like one of the first times that I was staying over at her place. <laughs> and, then, and then this happens. Oh, yeah. wow, man. You, what a great first date. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, insane. Oh, wow. But hey, I mean, we're still together. Uh, you know, it, it, it definitely brought us a lot closer with each other as mm -hmm. well. Um. Not to say that there wasn't a lot of pain involved in it, right? But that brings people closer together in right. a way, too. Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. It's been a journey for me, but for my family, uh, certainly as well, too. Yeah. 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 Same, brother. Same. For you, for you as well, I guess, right? Yeah. This, what you what know, did you just show me? Six years. This is my ring. Just got married. Oh, man. Hey, congrats. Thank you, buddy. So we had our Very wedding in June. Fun. All right, what? Wait, yeah. that was just uh, just very recently, yep. two months ago. Yeah. Tell me, how was how was the wedding? Man. How was just that day? You know what's beautiful about it is I was able to um, be on some good medication so I could fully experience the day. So I wasn't having PTSD and things like that, and. I got to hang around my friends while they they drank and stuff. I didn't drink, obviously, because you can't drink on beta blockers. Um, uh -huh. Uh -huh. But um, I, you know, went went out, walked around. I went to the little local bar. Um, hmm. I I um, walked down the aisle, started crying. You know, it was just beautiful to be present yeah. and and not not feel like oh I'm about to fall. You know, <laughs> so. It was uh -huh. beautiful, man. I hope you have that same experience on your wedding day, man. Thank you. That's thank you. That's very kind to say, actually. But I'm so happy to hear that you had a good day that day. Yeah. And that you were it's just great day. enjoying the wedding as a as an almost normal person, you could say. Yes, as an almost no couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Beautiful. Wait, but you, you, you still experience these PTSD symptoms today? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So now I got a new medication that's been really helpful, um, a daily preventative med and not just a rescue med. So for those listening, yeah. a rescue med is what they give you when you leave the hospital. So you take that as needed. Uh, daily yeah, yeah. preventative med is like an um, antidepressant that they give folks with PTSD. So um, they finally put me on a daily med so that I'm not having to reach a you know a climax of symptoms and then take a rescue med right so that's been much better mm. in my life and wait which other medication do you take so the beta blocker you said any, any yep. anything beta else beta blocker just those two beta blocker and the, yep. the um antidepressant the same one that you've been on since your cardiac i mean since the first cardiac arrest actually the first cardiac arrest i didn't they didn't put me on a beta blocker i don't think okay yep nope no beta blocker until like the ninth one <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> we spent a journey brother <laughs> yeah okay so i i or i feel like i just counted like three cardiac arrests or two yeah. cardiac arrests that you had right there's way more <laughs> okay go on please like when did the other ones happen oh man taking me back memory lane huh <laughs> uh, please i mean uh <laughs> you can stop me any moment you want right i don't want to per se dig into the past and relive or make you relive i signed up for that... this though didn't i <laughs> <laughs> okay <laughs> that's it that's true <laughs> yes uh. so the, so the next one was um let's see if i can go back in the archive so we had the basketball the first one the basketball the yeah. second one then we had the I believe the third episode, which was the most significant one, um, 2022. Okay. Yep. So 2020 and then 2022. So business is doing okay. Slowing down a little bit. Um, at this particular time in my life, um, we are going to my grandma's 90th birthday party. Mm -hmm. So we are at okay. the house, grandma's house. We got 40 people in the house, a little bit hot in the house. And I start to feel this heat. Yeah, I feel this heat in my arm and my legs. And oh, that's just the PTSD. It'll go away. Oh, man. Oh, I'm getting some brain fog here. What's going on? Mm. 
Let me go sit down for a sec. Huh. Oh, okay, we'll just let it go. It's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Then my my wife, uh, fiance uh-huh. at the time, she uh, called me on FaceTime because she was actually visiting her parents, so she wasn't able to be at the birthday party. And I'm on FaceTime with my wife right here, holding the phone, walking to the kitchen. Boom! <laughs> phone Ooh. falls right there. Yeah. My uncle catches me as I fall to the kitchen floor. And then I'm sitting there, full on, full uh, storm, storm episode. So I had nine cardiac arrests within five minutes. Three needed shocks, two uh-huh. or three additional um, where I self-corrected myself without needing a shock. So it was just a storm, Whoa. right? It was just a storm. Paramedics come in, you know, full. They're all freaking out, man. One one of the girls, I'll never forget. It was like our first day. Mm. She freaking out. <laughs> wow. She freaking out. So I had to play lieutenant. Right. So I'm actually coaching her. <laughs> so I'm sitting there coaching her and the rest of the team like uh, so uh, beta blocker. So right. This is protocol. Right. I'm coaching them and then I'm going shock and then they're backing up. Right. So they are away from me and then they get me on the gurney, take me to the hospital. And uh, there's my next recovery zone for the next six, 12 months. Hardcore recovery. Uh, new new meds, uh, trying to reconfigure device, all that, and then obviously uh-huh. business really started to struggle because obviously I'm dealing with this. So that was, uh, yeah, man, that was that was the next one, and then the final one episode was this year in March mm-hmm. 2023, and I was washing my hands. Just washing my hands, and I go out of the bathroom, fall down, go face forward, and um, luckily I was on a good regimen, so I took a rescue med, ambulance came, went into the hospital, discharged the same day. Okay, yeah. Yep, so it got better. My recovery, my bounce back, my comeback got much better. Holy shit, man. That's a lot to hear. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. All these happened so rapidly each, every year, like another sort of event. It's almost like I can anticipate it now. It's like once a year it happens, you know? How do you stay motivated like that to mm-hmm. to just, I mean, if I would have had so many shocks mm. in these two years now and know like, oh, I'm going to get maybe another sort of event next year. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. That's that will cause me so much pain, and and you know, mm. will cause maybe my business to also fall apart, or right, right. or so many other things. Man, how how do you how do you stay motivated? How do you can tune? If I'm being honest, man, I I had this realization, and I really hope this this is helpful because I know when people listen to podcasts, they always get this kind of corny answer. So <laughs> I'll give you a really honest answer, actually. I never put my priority anymore on things like business. I only prioritize my emotional health in the very moment that I'm talking to somebody. Mm. So Mm -hmm. I'm so urgent and present that I'm not even thinking about that anymore. And I had to train my brain to do that. So it's almost a coping mechanism. I will be honest. Yeah. Um, because one, I'm yeah, not a bad one, right? It's healthy. It's not a bad one. I'm not right. um, denying that it's impact or anything like that, but I'm hyper-focusing on the moment. So much yeah. so to the point where business, uh, outside things, new networking, new career, those things, if I'm just being blunt, man, they really don't matter to me. They're 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 so far removed from my priority list. I'm still gonna be a high performer. I always have been, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. But if I'm being honest, it's just not a priority. And when I let that go, 
it also lets go of that little inner critic that you have in your head where you're like, oh, mm. well, you didn't do well or you messed up or this isn't going right. So I was really able to finally let go of that inner critic. And the the biggest person that helped me with that was my wife. Your wife? She every day, bro. She's like, Kevin, you're a fucking boss. You're a fucking lieutenant. Don't you ever forget it. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying, man? Hell and yeah. that shit really, yeah. if you hear that every day, you're going to feel that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because cause I am a lieutenant, man. Like, you can't survive all that shit without being a lieutenant. I had to direct those paramedics. You know what I mean? So mm-hmm. it's like going to war. I'm a lieutenant. So now that I respect myself and see myself as a lieutenant, fuck what they talking about. Fuck a failure. It's not even relevant. I'm a mm. lieutenant. I'm a winner. Damn, I'm a winner. Yeah. That's how I get through it, bro. I mean, you are like the definition of what I would put on someone being a true heart warrior. You're like a true warrior dealing with all this. That's insane. Uh, Yeah, it's insane. Thank you, brother. Thank you. But don't you feel somewhere angry or, or some other oh, emotion yeah. or something? Because of oh, yeah. what your life could have been? Yeah. And how I much this should've... is all standing in the way? I had aspirations of being a uh, Grammy Grammy winning songwriter. And I actually got close. Oh, wow. I real? actually got close. Yeah, I had 70 different, 70 of my songs have been featured on television up until this point already. What? So if you Google Wait, what me, kind of music? If you Google me, that's yeah. the first thing that comes up actually before any of my businesses. So it's uh hip hop, pop, uh, and uh, rap music. So I, I grew up and I made rap music and beats and things like that, and my brother and my friends and you know, <clears throat> out my first placement was in a movie and um that was in theaters. It went number one comedy movie. It was called Almost Christmas. <laughs> so <Whoa. clears throat> I had I had a real trajectory, you know what I'm saying? Like my goal was to get all those placements and then leverage that to be a, a full time songwriter, paid and and move to LA. That was my goal. But obviously, mm-hmm. how are you gonna do that when you can't even get on the plane? You know what I mean? So Yeah. That was where I thought my life was going. And the beautiful part about the cardiac arrest is like you said, it turned me into a heart warrior. So I actually have a bigger impact now and a bigger, per- funny enough, I have a bigger personal brand than I ever would have had as a musician. You know, I have qu- almost quarter million followers now. That wouldn't have happened without having such a, I, here's how I look at it. I, I feel like I have a 12 figure story. And most people, yeah. right? Most people, they have maybe a five figure, six figure story. But if you were to make a movie about all the stuff I just told you about, that that would be really good to watch. Like people would be pretty captivated to watch that, like to hear my PTSD voice and uh, feel those cardiac arrests on the big screen. That's a huge blockbuster story. You know what I mean? So I hold on to this belief in my head that eventually I will reach the pinnacle of what I see for myself. But the but the beautiful part is, even if I don't make it long enough to live that, um, I've had enough of an impact in my community. There will be an, a street named after me. I know that for a fact. Yeah, yeah. So I feel like I didn't well, do too I mean, shabby, you know? No, no. Absolutely not, right? I mean... Still angry, though. Still this... angry as shit. <laughs> yeah, brother. You angry, too, I'm sure, right? I mean, of course. I mean, especially when you start thinking about what if it wasn't, you know, like this. Right. Of course. But I also try to not let that stand in the way with like, okay, Mm -hmm. it's how it is now. And I got to kind of, I got to, yeah, got to do what I got with what I have. Right. Right. And yeah, it's just all about that now. It's all exactly. It's all about that now. Yeah. Hmm. S- sitting in the setback too long, you're gonna miss the the comeback season. Exactly. You just dwell <laughs> on that setback, man. It's just gonna. It's just gonna eat you alive. Yeah. It's not even gonna. 
You're not even going to get anywhere. No, you're absolutely right. But again, not easy to always do that, right? Definitely some Never. days where you do feel angry or sad. Yep. Or any other emotions. I'm sure in the beginning, mm-hmm. that's way more than maybe after some years. Right. Um, but you said something just now that do, do you fear that you might not reach my potential? Do you fear, well, yeah, or that you might live long enough in a way mm-hmm. to see even more of the impact that you could have. Yeah, that's the thing, man, is I know that, like, literally all it would take at this point, and this is what's crazy, man. Oprah Winfrey's life coach, Tim Story, 2 million followers, global icon, um, mm. huge keynote speaker, right? Been on Oprah show, Today Show, all that. I got a chance to interview him the other day. And I realized in that moment, there's no fucking way that would have happened unless I was actually the comeback king yeah (laughs) he's the original comeback coach that's his brand Mm. right there's no way a guy like that would ever sit down with me unless they actually saw me yeah as somebody that is like the king of resilience there's no amount of business deals movies press that i could ever do that's gonna convince Mm -hmm. somebody like that to go, yeah, yeah. I should go talk to this guy who has a small podcast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's when I really processed how powerful my story really is. I was like, "Oh, this is this is way bigger than me at this point." So even if I don't make it to see the full impact of having more moments like that, I've already accomplished a, a lot of those moments, mm-hmm. and I can yeah. I can rest easy knowing that. Mm. Like we were talking about, I was present enough to to feel the present love. Yeah, and that's that's what matters. It's true. Like Michael okay. Jackson, for example, he can't feel all the love he's getting. He's been getting love for forty years, thirty years. Yeah, and he will. Uh, he will continue, <laughs> continue like that, right? Mozart been getting I mean, love for thousands of years. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We all, I mean, we all your make work it. will continue to live on and impact people, and in that way, yeah. So, yeah, That's man. It's a, a beautiful thing to think about. Because this project that you're doing, man, like this is going to help cardiac arrest survivors 100 years from now. Hopefully, you know. <laughs> oh, no, I will. But yes. No, no fact. If I Think about it. If I could find it, we're on different. I'm in the United States. We're in different parts of the world. <laughs> if I found it, there's yeah. no telling how many more people are going to find it, man. This, this is a beautiful yeah. thing you're doing. It's almost therapeutic, man. <laughs> Seriously. Thank you. <laughs> Fucking best yeah. part of my I mean, game. It's, <laughs> that's a, it's the that's truth. Awesome it's the truth. I'm <laughs> feeling great being here, man. Shit. Hey, my apologies for interrupting the conversation. It will just take a moment. If you like the conversation so far and would like to support the Heart Warrior Project, check out the truly awesome looking t-shirts and mugs I created together with an illustrator for fellow Heart Warriors. My goal in creating the t-shirts and mugs was to create something that would help me feel more empowered in the battle that surviving this cardiac arrest has been and, well, still is in many ways to show not only the world, but also myself, the heart warrior that that I have become. And by offering the t-shirts and mugs on the Heart Warrior Project, I too hope that it can help fellow cardiac arrest survivors feel empowered too. The mug has become my go-to mug. I, I drink my coffee from it every morning and my tea throughout the day. Also, the t-shirts I personally love so much that I ordered more than a couple of them myself. I frequently wear one throughout the day and uh, certainly you can see me wear the t-shirt when I'm out climbing. I can only say this, have a look at the t-shirt designs and the mugs. And if you like what you see, I tell you, you won't regret ordering either the t-shirt, the mug or both of them. Not only will you have a fitting mug and or t-shirt for your current lifestyle, but you'll also be supporting the Heart Warrior Project and help me to continue doing this. In the description of this episode, you can find a link that will take you to the page where you can order both the t-shirt and the mug, or you can also go directly to heartwarriorproject.com to find it. All right, thanks for taking a moment to listen. Now let's return to the conversation. So uh, let me let me throw a question at you. Um, 
so you've had all these experiences now, you know, of uh, all these shocks, all these, mm-hmm. you know, cardiac arrests that you've had. Is there actually anything that you wished that your cardiologist would have told you, like, sooner? Mm. Or is there something that you wished you would have, like, discovered sooner about surviving a cardiac arrest and living with an ICD? Yeah, I wish they would have explained that the PTSD could be medicated immediately versus what they do Mm. typically for those listening is they put you through a, a process. So they say, okay, try this med. Uh, only use it when you need it. Okay, try this, man. Right? I wish they would have just been like, here you go. The exact mm-hmm. regimen that I have right now, but they're not legally allowed to do that, obviously. They're supposed to mm-hmm. take you through a protocol and have you try different things. But um, I can only imagine. Imagine, uh, I'm in those Facebook groups. I'm sure you're in them too for cardiac arrest survivors, right? And there's people in there who have 90 shocks. 100 shocks. Mm-hmm. We don't need to be experimenting uh, with meds for that. They they need the right med, the strongest one, immediately. Always, all day, whenever they want, without any shame, guilt, fear, anything. Just that That's what I want for my fellow survivors. Because if I would have just got that med uh, year one, oh man, I'd be way further along in my, in my life and my journey, my recovery, if I just had that right med right away. Mm. Okay, so the impacts of that, it really changed your life. Oh yeah, man! I, I could I could be in these Zoom calls. I'm having no yeah. jitters. Um, I'm I I had some orange juice this morning and walked down this. Man, I remember. Man, this is gonna blow your mind. There was a time. <laughs> there was a time I couldn't even walk down the stairs without being scared out of my mind. Yeah, yeah. Couldn't even go cook my own. Man, I couldn't even cook the breakfast on the skillet without. Hmm. That 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 that's too. Man, I gotta eat. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I gotta eat. Of course. I gotta, you know, couldn't drive. All kinds of things, man. And that, and now, take my med in the morning. And I'm good. Yeah. So it became a handicap, actually. And now. Oh yeah. What so, about yeah. therapy? Is that is that something that's been on the list or something that you've uh, experimented with? Yeah, man. So I had the same therapist actually even before this. So even before the very first cardiac arrest, I had a therapist just for you know Tim's story. Uh, he calls it, uh, his friends, they call it mental hygiene. Yeah. Yeah. So I really like that approach. So I don't look at it as a, um, as a, uh, mental health issue. I look at it as hygiene. I see what you, you see mean. what I'm saying. And because I approach yeah, like taking a shower, but then for your well being. Exactly. Yeah. And so that way I was already doing that. I was already brushing my teeth before I had the cardiac arrest. Good. And, um, that made it easier to have these difficult conversations. Like when I have a really bad uh, mm. day and I feel really down, I call her up and I let her know where I'm at. And then we talk it through. And did you feel that that had any impact as well with the PTSD symptoms or mm. anything else? Or mm. was it really the medication that really did the thing? I'd say it helped a little bit, but the medicine... Yeah, the medicine it, it ain't nothing like it, man. It's it's it's. Here's the easiest way I can explain it for people listening. It's mm-hmm. kind of like imagine you're driving, and you know when it's really packed and there's like a hundred cars around you and you feel congested. Yeah, <laughs> right. It's like all the cars go away. Yeah. Mm, so it's just okay, you yeah, on the road. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, I'm just driving Cruising home. around. Yep. Yeah, listening yeah, to your yeah. favorite song, right? It so much different driving experience mm. versus being stuck bumper to bumper with a hundred cars around. You can't go nowhere. Loud music blasting. Okay, that's a good way of uh, of visualizing what you're feeling. Then, okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, I, I, I'm just thinking that, like, because uh, I why why do they actually know why you had a cardiac arrest? Never. They never figured it out. No. no. So they also don't know why you still get heart, cardiac arrest. That's correct. There's no family history, nothing. Nothing, bro. They did everything. Of heart problems. Genetic really? test. What? Stress test. Everything you can think of. MRI. Brain scan. All of it. Hmm. Couldn't figure it out. All they know <clears throat> is that the obviously just like you, there's an electrical imbalance. And um, they attempted to ablate. We did an ablation oh, did. surgery. Yep. Mm-hmm. 
Um, and they said the first time didn't get it. So I went in a second time and uh, they said yep. that they got it. That was last year. And then I had the more cardiac arrests again, even after they ablated. Hmm. That was probably the most, that was, that was kind of like my low point. Cause I thought I was cured. They were like, Oh, we did 38 yeah. ablates. We got it. We got it, Kev. We got it. And then I had the nine cardiac arrests and I was like, Oh yeah, this ain't over. Yeah, man. This ain't it's over. like a hard slap in the face. <laughs> that's a great way to look at it it's like pow <laughs> yeah. we have it uh, not really <laughs> slap no. oh wow oh that's funny wait but if they did an ablation then there has to be something that they saw was not going correct with your heart right yeah yeah, yeah. they found they found the area they don't know why oh, it happened okay. though they don't know why uh yeah, 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 yeah. they found they found the area that was having an issue but they have no idea what why that uh why that started happening hey man are you, do you feel like this covid thing had anything to do with this or no uh, i mean that's a really really difficult question right yeah it uh, is it's not it's, it's a good question in a way right uh but a tough one to explore i guess too I have no idea. I literally have no idea. Um, because, I mean, at the same time, cardiac arrests happened before COVID too, right? Uh, so, I have no idea. Really don't know. Yeah. But you somewhere think that it might have done so, that it might have been a reason? No, no. I just, I just thought about it one time and, just curious what you thought about it. I don't. I don't think it has anything to do with it. Um, I think honestly, you know what I think it is. <clears throat> I remember when I was younger. Now that I think about it, when I played basketball, I always felt more out of breath than everybody else. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I think that was this, but it was just maybe not as exacerbated yet. Mm. That's what. That's my theory. Is yeah. that Maybe I had that electrical imbalance when I was younger, and I just didn't know that that's what that was because. <clears throat> I remember I would get like a um, little bit of heartburn or um, exhaustion. Yeah, or yeah. These little things. I feel out of breath playing basketball. Maybe that's what it was, man. Maybe it was this the whole time. I mean, yeah, because when, like I said, like I have my heart condition my whole life, and when I mm. do sports, I'm always out of breath immediately. So it is a symptom of a mm. heart condition or potentially a symptom of it, right? Uh, mm, okay. So yeah, and it could have been that there was. You always, had this when yeah, you were some... a baby. No, so it's weird. It developed through the years, and then when I was, uh, I think, six years old, they uh, checked my heart, and then they heard something like extra heartbeats, and then they were like, wow. "Okay, maybe you should check this out." And then uh, yeah, uh, they did like uh, an uh, an uh, echo and an. ECG and then immediately was like, okay, yeah, you got uh, some kind of heart disease there. Mm. Uh, and then they also mm. checked it in the hospital with an actually surgery that they went in uh, to my heart with a, a camera to truly see what yep. was going on. And then they confirmed a specific heart disease that I have, yes. Uh, got it. Okay. Yeah. But apparently it can develop through the years and become interesting uh, more. So maybe there was something already back then, but that Perhaps. it now kind of exploded in a way do you uh, do you appreciate the fact yeah. that you don't know with certainty or do you wish you had certainty about about if you had it when you were born or how it developed and things oh. like that do you wish you were certain about its prognosis not sure i mean in a way my approach in the end with with this all was at the young age that i, I and and when i grew older I just lived life that I like I didn't have a heart condition. Like I did everything that I in a way wasn't allowed to do. <laughs> but I was like, oh, I want to do this. I love, you know, I love climbing mountains for example. I climbed many mountains in my life, but I was wow. technically not allowed to do that. But I have zero regret that I did that. That it, that I did mm. any of this those things. So even if I knew the prognosis or, or like I think uh, yeah, it can be helpful in a way to live life sometimes like you don't have a heart condition. Agreed. Uh, now, I mean, in the limitations, right? Like go to your check-ins every year or every half year, but at the same time, do the things that you still want to do as well. Because here's the truth, man. 
Yeah. If I'm going to go on a boat ride and have a cardiac arrest, I'm going to have a cardiac arrest. Because cause that's <laughs> the thing is like, you think, yeah, oh, yeah. if I don't, if I don't go to that grandma's birthday party or if I don't, you know, shoot that basketball, mm-hmm. it's like, it can happen when you're sleeping, when you're walking or when you're running. So get over it. Exactly. And I'm thinking then at least do something awesome while it happens. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but <laughs> yes. not saying that's the smartest uh, suggestion, right? But that's uh, that makes me at least. Uh, yeah. Seems to work for us. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Man. Hey, but how, how do you feel today, actually? How do you feel today, you know, after all this happened? Part of me feels like I lost something. Yeah. Part of me feels like I lost something in this experience. Mm-hmm. Part of me feels um a deep like what? Maybe hard to describe, but yeah. Part of my identity of being young, athletic, explorative, adventurous, mm-hmm. uh yeah. take risks. I feel like some of that part of me is not there anymore. Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I follow you in that myself too. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh-uh. Mm-hmm. I also feel like I gained some wisdom, some resilience, and some street cred. <laughs> for sure, for sure. <laughs> so I try to wear that yeah. with a badge of honor as much as possible because my inner yeah. critic likes to shame me for having that voice of, oh, you're a lieutenant, you're a badass. There's this little voice that goes, stop bragging. Hmm. I think I mm-hmm. need to shut that voice up a lot. So. That 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 voice is gonna be there for a while, but I know what it is. Mm-hmm. It's um, it's the old you asserting expectations that are not realistic. Right? Yeah. 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 That's old you the sitting there going. Go. Yeah. It is. It is. Do you ever feel like um? Some people don't understand your your emotional temperature and you're kind of mm. walking through scenarios on autopilot sometimes. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I mean, since my cardiac arrest, for sure, um, a, a certain quality of life has been completely taken away from me. Uh, mm. Then who knows, might still improve a little bit. But just uh, I do feel a lot constantly fatigued and dizzy and nausea. Mm-hmm. I st- I try yeah. to just you know live my life, but uh, it's so much more painful in a way to do all those things. Uh, mm-hmm. And people don't see that when they look at me, and they don't exactly. understand that either. And that can be uh, very very lonely. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and yeah. Very especially the dizzy part because we look so healthy and young. So yeah. they think, oh, he's fine. And yeah. it's like, dude, I'm fighting like 100,000 thoughts, itches, mm. jitters, all that. And you, you just, I'm not communicating that to you because yeah. of a lot of reasons, but mainly because I, I don't want to think about it. I mean, if you look at you or at me, at, at us both talking to right now, and you would have no context what this would be about this conversation you would not right. imagine we talking about dying <laughs> and having died and about, you know, heart disease. I mean, we're young people who shouldn't talk about this in a way, right? But, yeah. well, here we are talking about this. It's different, you don't too. See that. You know what's funny, man, is it's different when young people are talking about it. Way different. <laughs> you ever yeah, notice that? Because yeah. when you're 70, 80 years old, that, yeah. that, your runway is different and your context of what you're talking about is way different. Yeah. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Is there actually anything for you that helps you when you feel down mm-hmm. or sad or just, you know, frustrated with everything? Anything that helps you emotionally during those moments? So there's two levels to that. That's a really great question. Mm-hmm. The more serious level is the you take the rescue men. That usually happens when you wake up on the wrong side of the bed. Maybe you had a stomach bug. Maybe you got the flu. And as you know, when you have a cardiac arrest thing mm-hmm. going on and the flu, it feels a lot worse than the flu. Whew. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was a lot worse than the flu. So mm-hmm. that's when the rescue med comes in. You take that rescue med 10 minutes later, you're going to be just fine. Um, the less serious version, I started doing uh, breathing uh, exercise. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I would go. And when you do that, you'll feel this weird sensation in your brain. Mm-hmm. And um, it tricks you into thinking <clears throat> thinking better. Okay. It distracts you. Mm. So that just. And you feel it's been helpful yeah. to do that? Yeah. Okay. So if you're focusing on the. <laughs> you're not focusing on the PTSD as much. I see. Mm-hmm. Did you somewhere found it, uh, like a video or something on YouTube, or or where you heard about therapist. it? Therapist. Therapist. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's why you paid. Right? <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> well, to get actual tools. Gotta right, get that to, ROI, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 So those are two things I do. Let me ask you two more things, if okay. that's okay. Yeah. Um. Is there anything for you that you still feel is very difficult to communicate to the people around you? Mm. That, you know, is there something? Pay attention more to what I'm not saying than what I am. Mm. Mm-hmm. I think the nonverbal communication and the um, context of what I'm not saying by trying to be articulate and communicate and relate to you mm-hmm. who's not a cardiac arrest survivor, right? So if I'm talking to somebody and I'm saying something, Listen to what I'm not saying. Mm. That's going to help you understand what I'm trying to say better. And I think that's a really hard thing to communicate because how do you tell somebody, hey, man, you're annoying me. (laughs) I need my space right now. Yeah. Without them thinking you're an asshole. Sure. You can't. We don't live in a world where you Uh can do that. You can't just go up to people and, and... Hey, man, I'm having a PTSD episode. I need you to get the fuck out of my way right now. That might be what I'm thinking, but Mm. it's not what I'm saying. So pay attention to what I'm not saying. Yeah, 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 yeah. So a last just kind of question for any other survivor just listening. (laughs) I mean, you've shared in our conversation a lot of great things actually already. But is there anything, just the last sort of tip uh that you would wish uh other survivors to know or is there anything else that you still would like to let any survivor just know i said this thing to my mom on the floor on the kitchen floor my grandma's kitchen floor when i was having the nine cardiac arrest and i told her i looked at her in their eye and i said please forgive me if i don't make it this time that was very therapeutic and releasing for me because it was like giving permission to let your family know where you're really at instead of always posturing as the strong survivor. Right. So I let go of that image for that moment and let her know where I was really at. And she let me go in that moment in a sense. She said, okay. You know what I'm saying? So that 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 really helped me um, realize that just because you brand yourself as a survivor and you help other survivors and stuff like that doesn't mean that you now can't still have those feelings. You know what I'm saying? Like it's still okay to feel that way deep down even if you're not expressing that. Pay attention to what you're not, what's not being said. And um, I think some people will go, oh, well, that's not being authentic. No, that's that's not what that is. It's called perseverance. We, we move forward despite what we're feeling and what we're thinking. And that's um, a beautiful thing to be celebrated, not, not taken down. Hmm. Kevin, thank you. You know, so much for taking the time and for being here on the podcast. And, you know, who knows in the future, we'll do a second round. Oh, yeah. Curious to know in, I don't know, some months how you're doing. Um, But for now, thank you for being here. 
And there we go, everyone. I hope that you enjoyed this episode with me and Kevin and that you gained something out of this episode, something that can help you on your own journey. Now, to find anything that was mentioned in this episode, uh, you know, to or, or to connect with Kevin and to check out his work, uh, like the podcast Setbacks to Comebacks podcast, uh, check out the uh, show notes, which are located in the description of this episode. Or you can also go directly to the heartwarriorproject.com slash podcast and search for Kevin. With that, thank you for tuning in and uh, maybe I get to welcome you again on another episode here on the podcast of the Heart Warrior Project. This is your host, Helis Vaas, signing off. Before you go, I uh, just like to remind you of the Heart Warrior t-shirts and mugs I've created together with an illustrator. If you're looking for a fitting t-shirt or mug that will not only show the battle you fought and are still fighting, but also something for yourself to wear and use that will make you feel empowered. These t-shirts and mugs will be a great addition to your life. It certainly has been true for me. Additionally, you will also be supporting the Heart Warrior Project, which will help me to keep this project running. Now, if the t-shirts or mug doesn't speak to you, but you want to support the project, we also accept donations. You can find more info about all this by going to the description of this episode. There you can find a link to where you can order the t-shirts and mugs, as well as other ways to support this project. Or you can go directly to heartwarriorproject.com to find this information.